Uh, we'll run through this a little quickly. So question number seven, uh, thermal head center of rotation is templated directly superior to the center of rotation of the acetabulum. And what effect would that have? So the answer would be increasing limb length. And it, as I mentioned earlier, it's interesting that about a third of the participants answer the exact opposite of that. So I want to make sure that uh, when you're looking at a template question dealing with offset or leg length, I think the best way to understand it is to look at the radiographs or visualize the radiographs and the different options there. So for an example, if you look at uh, radiograph C and you look at the center of rotation of the acetabulum and the center of rotation of the femur, if you think of it as reducing the femoral head into the acetabulum, uh, you can see that the effect would be to decrease offset. So that's not this particular question, but I think that's a better way to visualize it instead of just trying to memorize a chart. So for this question, number 18, they ask, um, which figure will increase the offset of the, leg, of the leg while keeping leg length the same? So looking through the options, E would keep the leg length the same, and as you reduce the femur into the acetabulum, would increase the offset of the construct. So E would be the correct answer. And um, as shown here, most, most participants got that right. So here is a chart. And if you learn better with the charts, uh, make sure you're familiar with this. I think this is a concept that gets repeated often on the uh, tests uh, and deals with offset and leg length. So in terms of templating in general, uh, the definition is to anticipate the size and the position of the implants prior to the surgery. Uh, Tom Mallory always said you need to do your thinking or you should do your thinking before surgery rather than during the operation. And templating allows you to, one, anticipate potential difficulties. It allows you to reproduce the proper hip biomechanics and I think goes a long way towards minimizing leg length discrepancies. So I think if you can anticipate somebody with a varus neck who may be um, easy to lengthen if you've not done templating, with somebody with a varus neck, you might sink the thermal component a little bit lower, use a longer neck, increase offset, and avoid lengthening the leg. There are a number of steps to templating. And first of all, you need some appropriate radiographs. And I'll go into some detail on the x-rays in a minute. Uh, the second step would be to establish your radiographic landmarks. First measurement would be your limb length discrepancy. Uh, generally, the arthritic limb is going to be shorter than the, the other leg. Uh, then you template your acetabular component to determine where the center of rotation will be for the new total hip. Uh, there's uh, not a lot of variation on where you can put the acetabular component. You generally have to go where the bone is. And then you can um, modify your offset and leg length by how you template the thermal component. You can raise the thermal component up and down or use increased offset or longer necks to change your offset. So those are the steps. So first, uh, proper x-rays. Uh, you need a good AP pelvis. The pubic symphysis should be centered over the sacrum so that you have a direct AP. You also would ideally like a good AP of the hip itself. And to get this, the hip should be internally rotated about 10 or 15 degrees. Most hips, particularly those with arthritis, tend to be stuck in some external rotation. And this can decrease the amount of offset when you're trying to template. So have your x-ray techs rotate the femur in 15 degrees. If the uh, hip is too stiff, oftentimes you may need to template off the contralateral hip to get the appropriate offset. So external rotation of the hip will falsely decrease the offset. It can make the thermal neck uh, look more valgus than it actually is and may influence the size of the implant you choose inappropriately. It can also, uh, to a lesser degree, decrease the size of the thermal canal. So I think uh, accurate templating helps you in the OR and hips that are internally rotated 15 degrees are more accurate. Also a good point to have a good lateral. I typically don't use frog leg laterals. Um, I like a true Lowenstein lateral and it allows you to assess the bow of the femur, particularly in shorter patients, Asian patients, achondroplasts. You may have excessive bowing uh, that is in conflict with your components. So I think a, a lateral is always a good check as well. Typically, uh, x-rays have about a 15 to 20 magnification. Uh, we'll use a uh, magnification ball uh, to help determine the magnification uh, digitally. Um, 
Uh, some are still using the plastic uh, overlays, and they have uh, 15 to 20 degrees of magnification uh, built into them. Uh, pelvic obliquity is something uh, that can often be run into. That can be due to some contractures in the hip itself. It can be used. It can be due to some spinal deformities. And if you get standing uh, pelvic X-rays in your office, it may be an extraarticular form of shortening, say a remote fracture of the tibia, something like that, may lead to some pelvic obliquity. So be mindful of that. And um, one good way to differentiate a pelvic obliquity due to a spinal deformity, scoliosis is to check your uh, pelvis when the patient is sitting. And it um, takes away the leg length aspect of the pelvic obliquity and looks at the uh, spine. So if they sit with an oblique pelvis, it may be more due to scoliosis than uh, the hip itself. Radiographic graphic landmarks. Since the first measure, measurement you're going to make is uh, leg length discrepancy, uh, I think it's uh, you start with your radiographic landmarks. The uh, Ischial tuberosities can be used to draw a intrapelvic line to determine your leg lengths. I usually use the base of the teardrops or the top of the obturator foramen. And we do our templating digitally, and I'll often slide the line back and forth between the ischial tuberosities, the um, top of the obturator foramen, the teardrop, or even the base of the SI joints as they uh, all can be a little distorted, and uh, you can kind of use a combination of those measurements to determine the appropriate transpelvic line or the horizontal pelvic line. And then to determine actual leg length difference, you can use a landmark on the hip. Uh, the greater trochanter is often uh, is more affected by abduction and adduction, so I don't think that's a great landmark. Generally, the lesser trochanter is a better landmark. In this radiograph on the right, they've used the top of the lesser trochanter. Uh, that can actually move as the hip internally and externally rotates, so I tend to prefer the center point of the lesser trochanter. But in any event, it's a good way to um, use your pelvic transverse line, look at your femur, and determine which leg is shorter. In this particular case, both hips have arthritis, it appears, so you may not be too worried about leg length and uh, fix the first one and then catch up on the second one. Once you've established your leg length discrepancy, you then move on to uh, templating your component positions. And for your acetabulum, you need some bony landmarks to help you with that. First would be the acetabular roof. This x-ray is not the best uh, depiction of that. You've got a large lateral osteophyte that you would not include. So the acetabular roof helps you determine the uh, cephalad position of your acetabular component. Typically, to get a good press fit, I like the dome of the acetabulum to be slightly higher than the lateral edge of the acetabulum. Second landmark is the true floor of the acetabulum, which is defined by the teardrop, the, the lateral edge of the teardrop. And um, with those two landmarks, the teardrop and the acetabular roof, you can position your acetabular component. And again, you're looking for a um, more, uh, ideally an anatomic center of rotation for acetabulum, but you do have to go where the bone is. So if you have some dysplasia, if you have some bone loss and revision, you may have to move your acetabulum uh, slightly higher to go where the bone is. On the femoral side, the uh, radiographic landmarks include the uh, greater trochanter, uh, the lesser trochanter. And for those who do the anterior approach and can't see anything, oftentimes you use the saddle point as a uh, measure for where you're going to make your femoral cut. So as you can tell, I prefer posterior, so I tend to make my femoral neck cut measurements off of the lesser trochanter. In templating the acetabulum, uh, the steps are to uh, Size the component based on your bony landmarks, the roof and the medial wall. Place the component in roughly 40 degrees of uh, abduction. And um, mark the center for your new total hip. So always start with the acetabular side first. Determine where the center of rotation is going to be based on what the bone gives you for acetabular fixation. Then you go to the femoral side. And it depends on whether you're using a cylindrical femoral component, a uh, tapered component. Uh, but I think first step is to fit the medullary canal uh, of the femur and then move the femoral component up and down and determine your best fit for the metaphysis or calcar region. And then you look at your neck position and you try and recreate um, offset that you the desired offset and the desired leg length. So if you've measured your hip as being a centimeter short, you'd like the femoral center of rotation to be a centimeter above your acetabular rotation and determining what offset you uh, might need, you want to restore the appropriate offset. 
This case shows a, a stem that's seated below the level of the acetabular center of rotation. So if you reduce this into the acetabulum, you'd actually be shortening the femur, which is a very difficult thing to do in a reconstruction and generally loosens your soft tissue and may lead to instability. So this is not a really a typical situation. So in terms of restoring your offset, the ways you can do that, uh, you can choose a stem that has more offset or a lateralized neck. You can choose a stem with a different neck shaft angle. If it's a more varus neck, it tends to provide more offset. Or you can modify the length of the femoral neck uh, using a, a, a plus 10 head or plus 12 head instead of a plus zero head. Don't think I missed any points on that. OK. So here's question number 42. It's another leg length offset type question. And this will be uh, hammered home on the test. So make sure you have a, a very uh, complete understanding of the effects of offset and the uh, templating of offset and leg lengths. So looking at this radiograph, what are the effects on limb length and offset according to this template in figure A? So if you look at the radiograph, you can see you're not going to change your leg lengths if you use these offsets. If you reduce that femoral head into the acetabular component, you're going to be increasing your offset. And so the answer would be leg lengths stay the same. Offset would be increased, uh, number two. So uh, excuse me, leg lengths stay the same. Offset will be increased, number one. So 65% of the people got that correct. Again, 15% um, got the offset aspect of it flipped. So if you're trying to rush through a question, it may be an easy thing to get flipped. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.